Okay, here we find ourselves again uh, teaching on the will of God probably the last week, and we'll start on Ezra and Nehemiah. Uh, next week it will we'll segue into it out of this teaching of seeing, comparing Israel with the will of God, how they walked in it and how they did not walk in the will of God. And, uh, but the, uh, to carry on with the theme of this teaching, uh, I don't know, I've had, I've had three or four names to it. I, I'm not sure what the name of it is. I've had uh, Clash of Three Kingdoms. I've had Battle of Dominion. I finally just called it all of them. Threw it all in there together. And uh, let me get this thing in my pocket. There we go. And, um, but there is something I want us, the idea here is to see where we are in this day and hour that we're living and uh, how there's some confusion and uh, there's definitely a whirlwind of ideas and thoughts and uh, back about a year ago, I've I've changed my mind so many times in the last 12 months, I, I can barely hang on myself. You know what I'm saying? As, I, as, we, as we get to different news in, different fake news in, and then I found myself trying to discern, well, is this real or is this fake? Or, and just about give you a headache on it. Then you'll find yourself in an argument debating one side or the other, and you truthfully don't even know if you believe it or not. Has anybody been there? It's just so confusing. <laughs> so I finally, finally just settled on the will of God. You got the right and the left. You got your side, my side, and we got God's side. And I have discovered that the will of God and God's side, it never changes. It's, it's the only absolute thing I could, could put my head around it. And so if we've ever needed the word of God, it's definitely in this last year. And we can also say we're going to need it more so as we go because the spiritual climate and atmosphere is still just as confusing today as it was when this thing started, which I know it started before then, but when it was known to us as a whirlwind about a year ago. So I'm going, I titled it like this, uh, The Clash of Three Kingdoms, The Battle for Dominion. I've done a teaching on dominion before this on how God has created us to take dominion over the earth with Him. And it just so happens the way that we do that is not the way natural man thinks. How do we have dominion? Well, it's a little different perhaps than we think at times. Um, like it's obvious I don't have dominion over this button right now. Okay, I'm taking dominion over it right here. I'll cut it off and cut it back on and see what happens. No good. Well, Jason is seeing if we've got... Uh, now he did that upstairs. I didn't do it down here. I might have done that one. I think they're doing that up there, right? So, Jason to the rescue. Okay, I'll do this. The battle uh, is more about us finding the will of God. Pretend I'm sl I am working the slides. Now go down to the bottom. That it is, it, it's, it is not about, um, the battle is more about us finding the will of God than it is about finding our future. Can you hear that? Uh, the battle is more about finding the will of God than it is trying to figure out our future because <clears throat> I've discovered in the spiritual things that trying to find our future is uh, almost distracting to finding the will of God. Then right in the middle, if I was clicking a button, then that would come up in the middle. For our future is in the will of God. So we, we want to, and, and here's what that scenario creates. 
it creates, usually we go from this battle of the will of God in our, in our future. But when we skip the will of God in our thinking, in other words, we want to stand for God. We'll fight for God. We'll fight for His Word. But we won't read it. There's a problem there. Because we take great pride in standing for what's right. But not in living what's right. We take great pride in standing for God's ways, but we don't want to live in God's ways. And so here we find this, uh, this dilemma that we are in, in trying to find the will of God. So our future, the reason we want to, or I suggest that we not focus as much on our future, is that's the goal. What's the future of our country? What is the future of the world? Are we in the end? I mean, where are we? Well, the, there again, the future is distracting to the will of God. For our future is in the will of God. Thank you, guys. So that's, that's the premise we want to have is understand that the future of the United States and the future of this world and the future of your life is found in the will of God. And so that is just, it's paramount in this understanding and in this teaching to realize that we have, do have an enemy and it's you fight. When, you're, when we're drowning, did you know you will fight who's trying to help you? You will drown who's trying to help you? Well, God's trying to help us, and we're fighting for Him, but we're taking Him down with us. Now, the devil's doing a pretty good job in defaming God, but I, I'm afraid to say the church is doing a better job at times because we fight for what we don't live. We fight for what we don't live. You live what you believe. Now, in the human understanding, we think if we fight for something, whether we believe it or not, it still is counted unto us for believing. Yes, we do. But it's not. Just because you fight for it. There's many men that fought in Vietnam didn't believe in it. There's many people that will fight a fight, but they don't really believe what they're fighting for. Now, in this spiritual battle, it's just, it's just one little problem. You've got to believe what you're fighting for or your fight's in vain. It's not worth anything. You're just blowing in the wind. Can anybody hear what we're trying to say? So, our future is found in the will of God. Now, God created the earth, and uh, here's what we want to see. God created the earth, and He wants to share His influence and dominion. I've taught you the dominion part. Influence is new. With man, because it is His will in the earth for its future. Can you see that? It's in His, it's in his will. God wants to share His influence and dominion with man, because it is His will in the earth for the future. So when God, did you know that as Christians, we do more to influence than we do to convince. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? You, you don't convince Christianity. You influence for Christianity. See, convince comes out of the head, influence comes out of the heart. So if we're not influencing, we're trying to do it out of the head. I'm just telling you, there's, there's something here. If we're going to fight this battle, we've got to understand how it works. We have to understand what is, what is going on. Let's go a little quicker. Can we know the will of God? The answer to that is a big yes. We can know the will of God. It's in Romans 12 too. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? transformed by the what? Renewing of your mind that you may do what? Prove 
what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's a huge statement, somebody. That is a huge statement that we can know the perfect will of God. Huge statement. But it says there's one little caveat here. One little, one little, one little, as a redneck would say it, little booger here. <laughs> you got to be transformed. Your mind's got to be renewed or made new. That means your stinking thinking won't work in the new world of God. So here we go. Now, renewing often takes pruning. Now, you just, how many wants to know the perfect will of God? Or you, know, you, you dare better be careful. I'm taking you somewhere you don't want to go. All right. If you if you want to know the will of God, we can. But it takes a renewing of the mind. Renewing means that it needs to be made new once again. Growth does not always mean fruit. Come on. Now you need to feel that one. You need to feel it down in here, not up here. Growth does not always mean fruit. See, today we think if something is growing, it must be in the will of God. Are you with me? Now I'm messing with our Americanism. Growth does not mean equal, oh, well, am I in the will of God or not? I don't know, but I'm growing, so this must be the will of God. So we got this huge growth. Now, in the parables, we had a parable in Matthew 13 of a mustard seed. And it says that this, it grew up as a tree. You remember the parable? It's Matthew 13. And this mustard seed, and it grew up, grew up in this big tree. Now, there's a problem with that. A mustard plant's about this high. It's a bush. It's more or less a bush instead of a tree. So, in this parable, this mustard plant grew, had abnormal growth. Are you with me? And it said it got so big that the fowls of the air would land in its branches. And we already know that that's the evil one. It's because of this abnormal huge growth. Now, you got to get it here, prophetic people. Growth does not equal fruit. Are you, are you with me? Okay. Now, this is a, this is a grapevine. Well, it's in, a, it's in the winter stages here, but, but it's still, that's a grapevine. There's something wrong with that grapevine, but that's a grapevine. Now, it's had, the year before, it's had all this growth. And if this grapevine is not pruned, it'll just have more growth. But it won't produce grapes. Are you with me? So you can have a huge grapevine with no grapes. So what has to happen to it? You have to prune it back. And there was this story of this farmer, and he, he had some gra uh, grapevines, and he, he went out to look at his grapevines, and there was one real big one there. And So as being the farmer that he was, he got his pruning shears out, and he cut it back all the way to the, almost to the ground, just left a nub up about that high. And, he had to cut it back. hadn't been pruned in years and years, so he had to cut it back. And He went back the next day, and it looked like the stump of the grapevine was weeping. It had a little, looked like almost little tears, he said, coming out of where he pruned it, where the sap was trying to, to come out. And He said he could almost hear the grapevine say, you've made me look small in this big vineyard. And uh, so he left, as, as the story goes. He, the farmer left. He, he came back as the new growth came out. And the, the grapevine still wasn't that big, but it had, for the first time in years, had new clusters of grapes again. 
that would look like that. Now, if you can see, I, I don't have a pointer on this thing, but if you see, you can see the vine, and then you can see the new branches coming out on that vine. Well, coming out off of the new branches is where the new fruit is. Point being, if you've, point being, if you want to know the will of God, the, here's what the will of God always does. The will of God always produces fruit. So if you're going to be in the will of God business, you're going to have to be in the pruning business too and get used to being pruned. Now believe it or not, you know, in Scripture, it uses uh, grape vines all the time. And, but you, you prune them once a year. I felt like the Lord had to catch up on me in this last year. You got two or three years worth of pruning. <laughs> Anybody felt that? Oh, yeah. felt that one? And yet we want to despise the pruning, but we got to understand that when God prunes us, it's because we're getting ready to produce fruit. And the fruit comes out of the, the new growth. So that means we're constantly learning what God's doing, what it has got up to. We're constantly having to die to the old growth. Amen? Yeah. Or oh me? Yes. Are you with me? So we see here, renewing often uh, takes pruning, but growth does not always mean fruit. So as we start seeing this, and we start seeing this mustard plant, and it would grow up into this big bushy tree where the fowls of the air could land in it, the truth is what happened was it had abnormal growth, and that was not the will of God. You see. So it just so happens that huge growth does not equal being in the will of God. It just doesn't. But what does equal being in the will of God is if you're producing fruit. So we find ourselves constantly trying to produce this huge growth and not concentrating on producing healthy fruit. The question is, if somebody ate your fruit, would they grow or would they die? So keep this in mind as we're moving forward in this understanding of the will of God. Remember, God's ways are not our ways. They are just totally beyond our understanding. Just because it is the will of God, it does not mean it will happen. We've been through that teaching. The way we understand God's will is very, 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 very important. You just learned a little thing about God's will, how growth doesn't equal the, necessarily mean it's the will of God. Growth is not always proof of God's will, but fruit is. So we get this absolute, because we're saying we want, that the, the Scripture said we're, our minds are renewed so we can know the will of God, the perfect will of God. Well, when does this renewing come? It's when we're pruned. And as we're pruned, it puts us in a state of deficit. We don't have all this flowery branches and all to brag about. We've been pruned back to a nub. So there's nothing for pride to live in. Look what I've done. So we're pruned back. And so it's in that pruned state that's the best place to hear the will of God. Isn't that amazing? That's the reason when we first get born again, you know, we're pruned back pretty good, right? But boy, can we hear God. Just in every little thing, we can hear God here, we can hear God there. And then we go on and have accomplishments in life or in the church or whatever. And then all of a sudden we want to start saying, well, listen, I find favor with God because I have done this and I have done that. When understanding that what God likes is somebody that takes a pruning well. A pruning well. That one's hard, isn't it? A pruning well. I'm sure you've heard a lot of messages on that one now. The sovereign will of God. 
We've talked about that a little as I move forward. When God does not include man in something, it just happens, such as in Genesis 1-3. Then God said, let there be light. Here we see that God creates without man's input, and God does pretty good. He's never had to apologize for anything that He's made. He's not even going to apologize for you and me, even though we look like a mistake because He's made a plan of what's called redemption. I guess God doesn't lose well, because we're going to win. Amen. Because He has promised to complete a work, and He will not be ashamed, and we will not be ashamed. But the will of God and the free will of man comes along, starts colliding. Sometimes God's will involves the free will of man. We were not there when He said, let there be light. Thank goodness. If we did, we'd have smoke machines and everything else. Now, in these cases, in these cases, he makes his will known by some means, and then uh, man chooses to agree or participate or to disagree. So here, all of a sudden, we've got the will of God comes on the scene, comes on the planet. He wants to include man in his will. So the whole game plan here, folks is that are we going to join in the will of God or not? This whole thing of Christianity wasn't designed necessarily with the end game of just making you happy. Even though we can be happy. But that's not the game plan. The game plan is to find out what the will of God is. We're here on planet earth and there's something to be accomplished. It says this in Second Chronicles. This is where God includes man. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will do what? I'll, I'll heal their land. So here we see that it's, do you think it's God's will that the United States be healed? Yes. yes. And every other country in the world totally be healed? The answer is Yes. That is the will of God. And we can say, well, that's too big a job. <coughs> well, if it's left up to us, I would agree with you, but it's not. But I do want to join what God's will is. So it's God's will. And if I want to join God's will, then I am personally going to accomplish this. If my people, which are called by name, shall humble themselves. Uh, did I say anything about pruning? I think I did. Shall humble themselves. And here we go. God's will is not always happening on the earth. Now we can look around us and see that. You can not look at things that we are going on in the world and assume that everything is God's will. Because God's will does not always happen. Now that's just the reality that we are in. I went over that teaching about the prophets saying Trump's going to be president and all this mess. You can go back if you want to hear it. I don't know if you know it, he didn't win. That was totally a joke. Y'all aren't ready. It's too soon. I understand. <laughs> God does not demand control of everything. If he did, we would not have the ability to be free and make our own choices. So, here we have it. God's put us in a situation we make our own choices. We make our own choices. God brings that into his will. So now we've got the will of God. And we can choose to be in His will. Most of the time, it's amazing. We choose to be in His will. We get into His will, and we won't do it our way. I mean, come on, somebody. Right? Yeah. We want to join God's will and do it our way. Yeah. We've got a little disconnect there somewhere. Has anybody hit their nose against that door? Now, <clears throat> here we go. Now, remember this. Remember this. God's will was and is to share His dominion of the earth with His people. So at the end game of the will of God, God wants us to join His will and be in dominion of this thing. Now listen, church, there's a lot more been given to the church of Jesus Christ than we're utilizing. Come on. If the church doesn't seem like it's doing too much to you, I will have to agree we are not up to our potential that's in this book. But just because we hadn't made the Super Bowl yet doesn't mean we're not. This church is going to be ground zero of an outpouring of God. Come on. Come on. 
we're going to get a bad reputation of sick people getting healed. We're going to get a bad reputation of demoniacs being set free. That's right. yeah. Come on. Are you with me? Yeah. This is ground zero. There's no doubt in my ever-loving mind that this is ground zero. Right. Now, it's God's will. Can the will of God be stolen? And I, I went over a couple of these things. The devil is constantly stealing the will of God. He has a full-time crew out here stealing the will of God out of your life, out of my life, out of a church's life, out of the planet. He is constantly stealing the will of God. Now, you've got to understand something here. Satan's offense is weak, but his defense is strong. He likes to steal God's moves. What he feels like he has in his back pocket is, is, that the, that, is that the human will of man is involved. Because just God and Satan done done that one. But here we have this planet where God has inserted his people. They have a will. So Satan doesn't mess with God. He messes with us. Because we are to deliver the will of God to the planet. Amen. I've already shown you how we can know the will of God. And we're to deliver it to the planet. You're much stronger. You are to be feared by the dark side. We have tremendous power in the cross of Christ. These things we have yet to discover all that is in being called a child of God. Amen. So, here we go. Resur uh, restoration is restoring the will of God. Now, please get this. We're, this church is about, every church should be about the will of God on planet earth. That's what we're about. So if you come into this place, it's always my hope that we're not compromising with the world or with you or with me. It's our plan that this book right here, which contains the written will of God, will be declared in this room. And if you don't like it, I'm just really sorry. Because we're going to declare the will of God in this place. If it's going to be ground zero, it has to be totally given over to the will of God. We're not, in the, we're not even in the business of trying to compromise the ways of the world. We're going to call black, black, and white, white. That's just the only way we know to do it. And I know people, the way things are happening now, it looks like we might go to jail. Well, if we go to jail, we'll go to jail, and we'll get out, and we're going to say black, black, and white, white. If we go to jail, we're going to go to jail, and we're going to get out, and we're going to say black, black, and white, white. That's what we're going to do. We have no choice. We've already given it over to God to do His will. So restoration is restoring the will of God. So when you come in this place where you are out of relationship with God, we want to help you restore that. Why? Because it's the will of God. That's why. And we want to restore where people are not in the will of God. So they can be back in relationship with God. This will be ground zero to restoring the will of God in people's lives. No compromise. No compromise. Restoration is God's will, but we must believe this. Now, you ready? It's Isaiah 40, 31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Amen. Going to restore that baby doll right there. Amen. Going to restore it. You can say, well, Alan, I don't feel like flying. Well, we're going to restore it. Because God's Word says it, and you know why? Because it's the will of God. Amen. I want to join the will of God. And it's the will of God that we're all restored. Isaiah 61, 7. Instead of your shame, you will receive a double portion. And instead of disgrace, you will rejoice in your inheritance. And so you will inherit a double portion in your land and everlasting joy will be yours. That's the will of God. That's the will of God. That's what that is. You know what we're going to do here? Will of God. You know what we're going to do here? If you don't have it, we're going to restore it. 
You say, well, Alan, how do you do that? Because it's the will of God. Can somebody say it's the will of God? It's the will of God. Now, supernatural restoration of the will of God. Here we go. Jeremiah. For I will restore health unto thee. I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord, because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man can seeketh after. That's the will of God. That's what we do here. What kind of business do we do here? It's the will of God. As somebody the other day asked me, they said, Alan, are y'all in politics down there at New Life? I said, if it's the will of God, we are. <laughs> we said, what do you do? We're just doing the will of God. That's what we're doing. If it's not the will of God in politics, we won't stay out of it. You can say amen right there too. Now, Psalm 51, 12. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. You see that? Can somebody say a willing spirit? Now, I'm moving here just a little bit in the will of God. <clears throat> the first thing in doing the will of God is you've got to have a willing spirit. That's good. Can you see it? You've got to have a willing spirit. You can't know the will of God without having a willing spirit. So if you are fighting God, that is not a willing spirit. A willing, willing spirit is one that is giving over their life to God. If that's you, you need to write that one down and just, get, just do it now. Restoration is to restore our divine relationship with God. Now here we go. We have a divine relationship with God at our fingertips. At our fingertips, a divine relationship with God at our fingertips. It's here, it's upon us. It's here. Acts 3, 21. Heaven must receive Him until the times come for God to restore everything as He promised long ago through the holy prophets. So this whole deal now, I've said this before. you got Genesis 1-2 and you got Revelation 21 and 22. Genesis chapter 3 through Revelation chapter 20. God takes this much of your Bible. All but the first two chapters and the last two chapters. He takes that much of your Bible. is about restoration. Are you with me? Yes. This much of your Bible. First two chapters on the left. Last two chapters on the right is what God was up to. Everything in the middle is about restoring us to walk into Revelation 21. His whole book's about restoration. So what's this church about? Restoration. Are we about politicians? Yeah, we want to restore everyone to God. Yeah, we're in politics. We want them all saved. That's right. There's not anything all flemish to us to restore. Prostitution? Yes. Sinful heart, yes. Lustful thinking, yes. We want to restore everything unto God. That's the reason I told you. I said, listen, what's this church into? Restoring people unto God. That's what we're into. And the earth is our, it's, a, it's, a, it's all up for grabs. We do not limit any place on this planet to being restored to the will of God. Is anybody with me? So here we go. True restoration is an experience waiting for us that was created before the foundations of the world. Now, I'm going to read it again. I can tell I'm not going to get done today. I must be the long-windedest preacher on the planet. True restoration. Now watch it, watch it, watch my words here. True restoration is an experience waiting for us that was created before the foundations of the world. Uh, now watch it. It's in Ephesians 1, 4. <clears throat> he hath chosen us in Him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. God knew of all of us in here before the foundations of the earth. Before you were born, before your first sin, God already knew of you. 
we were in the mind and heart of God before the foundations of the earth. So do you know what God's trying to restore us to? God is restoring us to whom we were in His mind before the foundations of the earth. Okay, did anybody get that? Yes. You are being called unto, you are being restored unto whom God saw you as in His heart before the foundations of the earth. Your glory right there. The good news is you're better than you are right now. <laughs> the good news is you're going to live in eternity in a state of how God saw you before you fell into sin. Can anybody feel that? I just told you a big truth. I just told you what the will of God is and what's in God's mind. You were in God's mind before He created all this stuff. And He's calling you unto... Listen, what's in God's mind is what's going to be. I don't care what you think. Because it's His will. It's the will of God that everyone in here are restored unto whom God's seen us to be in His mind before He did all this. So we go to heaven, you're going to walk right into a new body. Everything that's new is it's kind of new, but it's kind of old. Because we're going back to whom we were in His mind before we fell. Good. Good so there's our journey. Our journey is to find the will of God. Our journey is to find whom we are in the will of God. Amen. It just so happens you can't sin and do it at the same time. It's just, it, it fouls up stuff. Amen. You see, sin is not agreeing with God. That's all it is. I say that's all it is. That sounds, I'm not minimizing it, but that's all it is. Right. Sin is not agreeing with God. Amen. Well, you can't disagree with God and be in His will, somebody. So, if you want to be in the will of God, we're not going to sin because we're, are you not interested in fully how God saw you before the foundations of the earth? Anybody interested in that? I mean, I am so interested in that. Of whom was I in God's mind before the foundations of the earth? And then, and then this is exciting. He's calling me to there because guess where I'm going to end up? Right there. That's the new Allen. That's the old Allen in God's mind. It's new to me. Amen. Y'all don't have to be so happy about the new me. Let's stand. I'm going to pray. Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you for your word and your will and your way. It's our prayer, oh God, that this morning, that this church would be a restoration place for whatever's away from God, for whatever's broken, whether it be emotions or in body, heart, soul, mind, body, anything that needs to be restored, I declare that this day that New Life Church is a restoration center. It's a restoration center of whatever's away from God. That we might run unto whom we're going to be in Christ Jesus. Amen.